Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to acknowledge the Wongal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, and pay my respects to the elders, past, present and emerging. I'd also like to welcome any, uh, any Indigenous people or people with per, uh, First Nations ancestry, uh, and uh, hope that you find something useful in the presentation this afternoon. My name is John Johnson. I am local studies librarian here at the City of Canada Bay Libraries. Uh, I am here with my colleague Alex, Ham uh, Alex Hammond, uh, who has very kindly offered to uh, be the subject of our uh, research this afternoon as an example of the way uh, as an example of the way that we do research on. Uh, on family history. So thank you Alex very much for You're welcome. Uh, sharing and maybe I might <laughs> just ask you what you would like to find uh, in the next half hour. Um, well definitely um, filling in some gaps in the family tree would be great um, and just learning a bit more about how to find those, um, how to fill those gaps. All right no worries. Um, and maybe pirates. And pirates, yes. <laughs> I, I was going to say that um, I, I have looked quite hard for pirates uh, and I haven't found any pirates yet, but you never know what we're, you never know what we're going to find. So I thought we might start with, um, I thought we might start by having a look at the computer and the family tree that, uh, that you very kindly supplied. Okay, so as you can see, um, we have uh, a, we have a family tree here, um, starting with uh, Anthony uh, Derek Hammond, who is your grandfather. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, and his wife Kathleen Baker, and as you can see. Uh, we then go back through the generations uh, until we end up with a bit of a gap in the family tree. So uh, Alex and I decided that it was probably best to actually have a look and see if we could actually fill a bit of that gap this afternoon. So we're going to see how we go. So we have um, up here uh, Arthur William Hammond and it has a date of 1873, maybe a play, maybe a, a date of birth, maybe a date of marriage. We're not really sure. And then the other name we've got is Harriet Nunn, uh, who is uh, the wife of Arthur William Hammond. So I thought that we could have a look at those two people, particularly, and just sort of see what we can find. So now I'm just going to go. Um, now, for those of you playing along at home, uh, what we can do is to access uh, our family history resources and particularly Ancestry, which is mostly what we're going to be using this afternoon. We do need to, if, we, if you're using it at home, we do need to log in. So I click on the login of our uh, catalogue, which is Canada Bay spiders.com and you'll get this page you then go to login and that's my library card number and the password for all of you at home the password is your date of birth and so I'm going to put my date of birth in there and I'm going to log in um, and is this a view only version of Ancestry? Okay. Now, once we've once we've logged in, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> Always got to have technology problems. Uh, so we'll try that one again. So I'm just going to log in there again. So I'll try that again. Okay, so I'm just going to log in. 
Okay, here we go. And so as you can see, this has now welcomed me to my account. And we just then go home. Once we've got gone home, up the top here of the page, uh, we can then go to Ancestry Library Edition. Now, Ancestry Library Edition does contain most of the source material mm -hmm. that, uh, that you can use for research. The big issue that it does have compared to the... Um, uh, compared to the the the, the personal um, uh, the personal subscription, is that you can't actually contact yep. anybody who's made a family tree, uh, and we will kind of see some of, we will see some of the issues with that. But <laughs> the fact is that uh, the library pays for a subscription for the public to use, and at least up until the end of December, you can access it from home. In the new year, it may be that it reverts to its normal mode, which is uh, you actually have to come into the library, either use one of our public machines or our public Wi-Fi to access it. But mm -hmm. uh, ordinarily, uh, ordinarily, uh, you uh, ordinarily you are able to access them from the library. But right at the moment, because of COVID, you can access it from home. So you can use this to view family trees, but you can't edit family trees. You can't edit family trees. Okay. You can't create your own family tree, and you can't contact anybody who has made a family tree. But you can extract information. Hmm. And as well as family trees, there's a lot of other resources available. So I thought that we would start then with William Arthur Hammond. And I did a little search on William Arthur Hammond. Now, you remember that we had a date of... 1873. Yep. That might have been a marriage date, might have been a birth date. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I had a look for 1873 and I couldn't find him in 1873. Oh. But I did find a uh, William Arthur Hammond uh, being born in Pampersford in Cambridgeshire in 1867. So I feel that that's highly likely to be our person. So we then have, um, so we've then got a person and we think, okay, that's maybe who we're after. Yeah, how do you check it? So there's a <laughs> few, uh, and, and that's, that's, that's actually a real good question. So you want to try and corroborate from multiple different sources. So instead of just... Uh, instead of just taking that piece of information and saying, oh, well, that must be correct, you then have to look and try and, mm -hmm. and see multiple different sources that will lead you to that same information. And in this case, so the first record that we've got here is a uh, christening uh, on the 31st of March, 1867. And father's name is Isaac Hammond. Mother's name is Catherine Hammond. And down the bottom here, you'll see the, these, these three names repeated. Unfortunately, with this one, there is no original document to have a look at. All we've oh. got is a, is a transcript. But what we do have in a next entry below that is the 1901 England census. Oh. Uh, which has Arthur W. Hammond... Uh, with a spouse's name of Harriet Hammond, uh, living in Pampersford in Cambridgeshire, which is where this family seems to have spent its days, uh, born about 1867 and residence in 1901 in Pampersford. So we can have a look and we have uh, some quite extensive details here. We can actually have a look at the image, which I will do. And this is the 1901 census. And what we have is, uh, now we might zoom this one in a little bit so that we can see it. So we have an Arthur W. Hammond. Mm -hmm. So you remember that as christened, he was William Arthur. Yep. He now seems to be Arthur William. 
Is that common? That's fairly common, okay. yes. Um, it's, it's fairly common for people to use a different name to the one that they were born with. In this, this is fairly typical where the middle name, it may well be that they that he didn't particularly like being called Arthur and he preferred William. Oh, okay. In some <laughs> cases, there's a big pile of, of the same name in the family and so somebody gets referred to as something else. So in this case, we have Arthur W. Hammond, who's the head of the household, age 34, and this is from 1901. Uh, his wife, Harriet Hammond, his son, William J. Hammond, uh, another son, George, and a daughter, Elizabeth. So if we then go back to our family tree, uh, we can see that we have the person that, uh, that we were looking for who uh, was born in 1893. His name is John William Hammond, with his father being Arthur and his mother being uh, Harriet. So we've got a couple of so we've got a couple of pieces of evidence that tie together well. Mm -hmm. You want at least two. Yep. Okay. Sometimes you will find three or four. Mm -hmm. And so, just because um, just because it's written down doesn't <laughs> doesn't mean it's correct. Yep. Just because it's in an official document doesn't mean it's correct. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, check and recheck, uh, and a word of warning with, with all of the family trees that are available online, whether they be Ancestry or via RootsWeb. A lot of those have incorrect information. It is always imperative to check everything that you receive. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> so the thing is that in a lot of cases the information is correct, but you, you you have to double check to be absolutely yeah. sure. Do you have trouble with people with very common last names? Smith. Yeah, I was about to say Smith. <laughs> Jones. <laughs> I, I know that Hammond is very common in the UK. Yeah. Um, so what I'd say is that um, what I'd say is is that <laughs> common names uh, Smith and Jones are the, are the classics. Mm -hmm. Try being John Johnson. That's that's fairly tricky. There's there's a lot of them. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And so what you have to look for is identifying characteristics. So things like exact date of birth. Mm -hmm. But again, we find that sometimes the information that's recorded is not necessarily correct. So even though we have an official document with a date on it, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is, uh, it, it is for sure and certain. So, uh, if I can emphasise anything, it's check and recheck. Yep. Now, we will go... So, we'll go back to our family tree and have a little look here. Uh, yeah, is that? Oh, yeah, there we go. All right. So, we've got Arthur William Hammond... Or William Arthur Hammond. <laughs> it's a little hard to tell. What At least is... it wasn't misspelled. That's right, yeah. Um, one really good indicator that you've got the right person is where you're getting the exact name, correct date of birth, in a particular place that's identified with, with a family. Um, prior to the advent of mechanised travel in the sort of mid-19th century with the railways. People all around the world lived fairly cir circumscribed lives, so they were kind of in quite narrow areas. And so sometimes you will find generation after generation who are living within a few kilometres. Mm, mm, okay, uh, yeah. Marrying somebody who might live perhaps five kilometres away living uh, their entire life in a particular village, dying there, their children being born there, and so on. And so, um, so for a lot of people, if they go back, say, to uh, where they came from, if, say, they go to the... For you, because we've found all these people in Pampersford, the odds are if you go to Pampersford in Cambridgeshire in England, you will find a lot of relatives... Possibly a lot of relatives still there, and certainly a lot of dead ones. 
<laughs> a lot of dead ones yep. uh, in, in the cemetery. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the church records? Yes. Now, we'll go back and we might talk a little bit about church records. Oh, do we have a church record? We do. Um, now, if I go back here and we will have a little look. So, so back at Ancestry.com? So back at Ancestry. And so the unfortunately, as I said, we didn't have a uh, we didn't actually have a, a an original to look at. But if you have a look at uh, William Arthur Hammond or Arthur William Hammond or whatever his name is, uh, we can see quite a number of references here to uh, we can see quite a number of references here to uh, church records. We've also got a record uh, in the 1871 English census, which we might have a little look at that one. Okay. And if we have a look. Um, now, this is the 1871 English census uh, wow. for William Hammond. And you will find Isaac Hammond, head of the house, his wife, Catherine Hammond. Now, you remember that when we saw the birth record, we had Isaac Hammond with uh, Catherine Hammond having a child called um, uh, called William Hammond. <laughs> yes? Yes. Okay. So that was in 1867. So in 1873, we have William and Catherine and their children, George, Elizabeth, John, Charles, Maria and William. William being four years of age mm -hmm. in the 1871 census, which means that he was born in 1867. So in this case, I'd be fair. We're now starting to, we, we're now, we've now seen three different records, mm -hmm. all confirming the same details. Mother, okay. father, date of birth. So mm -hmm. I would now say quite confidently, yes, uh, we have we have got the correct person here. I'm confident. We've got our culprit. We have got the person that we're interested in. Okay, so we might then move on to uh, his wife, Harriet Nunn. And uh, we found, well, actually, and we find her being born in 1866. So... I had a look at a few different Harriet nuns and narrowed it down to um, narrowed it down to this one, and I'm reasonably confident this is the right person. Now she was born in 1866, and you remember her husband was born in 1867. Now she was born in Whittlesford in Cambridgeshire. I don't know where. Do you know where Whittlesford? No. No. Nope, nope. So. Um, so is the fact that she was living close part of the way you whittled it down to um, to this record? That's right. So I, okay, so if I go Whittlesford and I can go and have a look at a map, <laughs> uh, not that I'm wanting to endorse Google Maps or anything, but if we go directions and we go Pampersford, which is we know where. Uh, it's a bit of detective work doing all of, um, okay. all of this. What we find, oh, well, this is a bit bad because I put it in miles. So we found that Pampersford and Whittlesford are 3.4 kilometres apart. So, so <laughs> I would say, yes, yeah, so and that, that, that's, that's one piece of evidence mm -hmm. um, that you have a person of the right name in exactly the right place. And I can say, yeah... <laughs> I think that that's fairly, I, I think that's pretty good. Pretty good evidence. So, not, I, I, so I won't say that we have the right person for sure, but I, I'm saying uh, as soon as we get a person of about the right age in the right place, uh, then I think the thing is that we're well on the way. Mm -hmm. Now, we might go back to Arthur, and what we will do is... We have got a civil registration of marriage for Arthur uh, William Hammond. And so if I have a look at that, what I find is that um, 
I won't go to the image. Unfortunately, the image is um, one of the ones that's quite it, it's quite poor. It doesn't actually no. doesn't okay. ha actually have all of the information in it. But in this case, um, we have Arthur William Hammond marrying Harriet Nunn in July 1893 in Linton in Cambridgeshire. Mm -hmm. So I've no idea where Linton is. So we might instead of looking for Whittlesford, we might look for Linton in Cambridgeshire. And we discover that Linton is less than 10 kilometres from Pampersford. So I'd, I'd, be, I'd be fairly confident that that's, that's the right one. Mm -hmm. So we're now starting to build up a picture of a family kind of in, in a fairly um, in a fairly narrow, narrow, uh, fairly narrow geographical range. So if we go back to this one, uh, okay. Now, possibly the one of the things that's interesting here is the marriage is July eighteen ninety three, mm -hmm. and if we go back to our family tree. Um, you'll notice that it's got John William Hammond being born in December 1893, which means, yes, now <laughs> don't take that as, as read because I did find other records suggesting it was 1894. So I don't know. I don't know for certain whether, in fact, um, whether in fact it was shot, a shotgun wedding or not. But that <laughs> that is the that that is the kind of that that is the kind that that is quite possible. But as again, as I said, you would want to double check the dates to to before you'd be able to say for sure. Well, yeah, this is what it looks like. Is that common to find um, multiple dates for the same birth? Uh, Yes, the thing about the birth date is that sometimes it will be a baptismal date. Ah, yeah. And sometimes it will be a birth date, and it depends <laughs> where the where the birth record comes from. So yep. yeah, yeah. Yep. So um, I I then am reasonably confident then that I have uh, found our our Arthur William Hammond. Mm -hmm. I'm reasonably confident about a birth date for him. I'm reasonably confident that I found Harriet Nunn. Mm -hmm. I'm reasonably confident about a, uh, a birth date, birthplace, and a marriage place for the pair of them. Mm -hmm. So I'd be, I'd be. <laughs> of course. Uh, I would be fairly, I'd be fairly confident that that we have filled that particular gap in. Mm -hmm. Then what we can do is that we can then look at the next generation, uh, the next generation back. Yeah, because we haven't even got names for the for this generation. Well, we do because we do. the birth records have actually given us names All already. Right, of course. So, uh, if we have a look, for example, at the um, at I the birth the baptismal would have it as well. What's that? The the christening or the baptismal might have it as well. Yes. Um, so the thing is that oh, that's that's actually not the right one. Uh, get the a little confused here, but um, what I did do was that from the uh, uh, from the uh, from both the birth records and the um, from both the birth records and the uh, and the census records, mm -hmm. um, we've got names of Isaac and Catherine Hammond. So I did a bit of a search on Isaac Hammond, yep. and it appears that his father was also Isaac. So there were two. So there's. Is that another common thing? Uh, that's a fairly. Uh, I'm. I'm actually. Uh, I'm actually John Johnson the sixth. I'm the sixth generation of. Uh, wow. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that's. So it's fairly common, and, and you will find that family names. Sometimes it'll be the same name generation after generation. In other cases, there will be a middle name. Sometimes the uh, sometimes the the maiden name of the wife is incorporated. Yeah, but yeah, the you get the same names generation after after generation. Arthur's Williams, Isaac uh, Isaac's a good biblical name. <laughs> and, and I did a bit of a search for Isaac Hammond, and 
I actually found uh, actually here we go this is the one yeah so I found some criminal records uh, for Isaac Senior and for Isaac Junior. Oh, no. So, I did say I found a little bit of stuff. So, uh, in this case, for example, we have... So, we'll do Isaac Hammond Junior first. So, he is the... So, he's, he's William Arthur's uh, father. Yep. Okay. So, uh, we'll actually go to the, the image and... Wow, we're really lucky to have all these images um, yep. recorded, yeah. Yeah, and these ones are now, I'm just trying to find him, I think he's, uh, <laughs> he's on this page here somewhere, oh, i just got to find him. Ah, yeah, here we go. Isaac Hammond Jr., uh, and he was charged in 1853 with larceny. Larceny means stealing, okay. Found not guilty, so uh, and this is for the uh, the county of Cambridge, and indicted at the Michaelmas sessions. And Michaelmas is oh, I can't even remember, but it's 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 a term for a particular kind. Of, Michaelmas is is a religious festival, and Michaelmas sessions. There's it it's essentially indicating what time of year they are. Hmm. Okay, held at the county, uh, held at the county court, twentieth day of October, eighteen fifty-three. Okay. Wow. So in eighteen fifty-three, Isaac Hammond Jr. is found not guilty of larceny. Um, and then I found Isaac Hammond Sr. Uh, was also indicted. He in eighteen thirty-eight. Uh, we'll just uh, I'm just trying to find him here. Ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> it is a test of eyesight. Ah, uh, yep. Here we go. So we actually have Isaac Hammond Senior, and he was found guilty of assault and sentenced to six months jail in 1838. I guess the thing is, with the thing with, uh, with the family tree is it's a kind of, I always think of it as, as a kind of scaffold on which you're, you build your family story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so with this case, it would be, we could then start to think about looking at things like, uh, like for example, um, we could look at things, for example, like, say, um, uh, newspaper records to actually see if we could flesh out some of the details on this. Mm -hmm. Now, And I noticed that you were looking for something different when you found these criminal records. Is that, do you usually start with marriages and birth certificates and then see if you can find some yes. dodgy business in the background? Uh, look, <laughs> the, the thing to me is that, uh, the, the thing to me is, is, is that the, these kind of, all of these records kind of help you kind of flesh out a picture of the lives of your ancestors. And so we can see here, um, yeah, that this kind of brings us to that, that kind of understanding. Now, I just thought that I would go one last thing, and then I think mm -hmm. we, we can round up. Uh, I actually found with Harriet Nunn, so I'm gonna, just going to open Harriet. I found a family tree for Harriet Nunn. Oh. And I'm reasonably confident that I have the correct person here. Um, she's the one who was born in 1866 in Whittlesford in Cambridgeshire. But I then started following this and I then looked at her father, Benjamin Nunn. And I've got Benjamin Nunn born in 1830 in Whittlesford. And then his father, James Nunn. <laughs> so as you can see, we're starting to we're starting to go back. So we've got a James Nunn born 1796 in Whittlesford. Mm -hmm. 
his fund now in each case here we could trace uh, I'm just tracing the I'm just tracing the nun name to make it easier but we could trace the uh, we could trace the female relatives just as easily um, uh, and this has been done by somebody on ancestry put yeah. together a family tree yep yeah. now I, again we need to ensure that we you know, so that's why you contact them and yeah, such, is you it? You contact yeah. them, or you you certainly take the details that you've found <laughs> and then uh, and then test them to see whether we've then got Charles Grumbler Nunn, which is a fantastic <laughs> name. <laughs> it is a great name. Born seventeen seventy six in Whittlesford, and then his father Charles Nunn, um, born seventeen seventeen fifty three in Thriplow, Cambridgeshire. Oh, and, and it's then, giving you a map. Yep. And, oh, yeah, each of these gives us... Uh, I'm sorry I didn't mention that, but, yes, each of these gives us a map showing showing roughly where they are. But... Uh, and we can zoom in. Mm -mm. But, uh, and then his father, Charles Nunn, who was born 1725. Um, and then his father, William Nunn, And that's where the family tree. Now you've got William Nunn here, born 1690. So wow. we are back into the 17th century there, mm -hmm. uh, very easily. So we'll go out of that, and we'll go uh, go back to the, the uh, back to the camera. <laughs> okay, so we're back on again. So. So what we've done is we've just had a bit of a look at um, how we would trace uh, our family tree. This one has been relatively straightforward because uh, because they're British and they have lived in a fairly confined area. Some areas are much easier to, to, to do than others. And I would particularly like to invite, if there's any uh, viewers out there who would like their family tree uh, explored in this way. Um, I'd be happy for you to um, I'd be happy for you to contact me and we can see what we can do. So I'm John Johnson. I'm based at Five Dock Library. More than happy to get a phone call or an email, uh, and we can follow that up. So, any comments? Um. No, it's been really good. I do want to ask, though, um, how far back do most family trees are able to go? Um, uh, and that that depends. To get that's back quite fascinating. To, to yeah. get back into <laughs> the to get back into the into the seventeenth century is mm -hmm. is relatively unusual. Um, wow! And it it just happened. It, uh, I don't know about the Hammonds. I haven't really looked to see how far back you could push that. And, and I guess the thing is, it comes down to this question of, of what value you see and what you would be interested in, in mm, pursuing. Mm. For some people, they're happy to <laughs> go back to... Um, they go, they're happy to go back to the point where their family arrives in Australia. And beyond that, they're not that interested. Other people are tracing uh, particular family stories mm -hmm. um, and in some cases it can be there, there, there can be value in um, where the where there's a, a rare genetic condition yep. uh, there can be value uh, in in tracing the family tree that way so I, I guess that um, the advent of um, record keeping such that mm -hmm. you can do this is we're looking, I guess, in most places at maybe the maybe the seventeenth century. Okay. Wow. Um, yeah. But it depends. I've been told that um, I've been told that there's there's uh, on um, on family <laughs> search. There's quite a big collection of Chinese family history records. Um, so it'd be interesting. I'd, I'd be interested if if there were anybody who has used those records. If anybody out there is interested in contacting me, I definitely I, I definitely would like to know more about using those kinds of records. Mm -hmm. Australian mm -hmm. records, obviously, uh, obviously Australian records only go back as far as um, uh, as far as European settlement. 
Although um, I do know that some Indigenous people have looked at the records left of encounters by, for example, um, uh, Captain Cook in Botany Bay, oh, wow. and made yeah. and extrapolated from them uh, to wow. chase their family tree back. But essentially, yeah, um, to mm -hmm. do this kind of work, you do need those those detailed records. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that, um, you know, again, as I said, it comes down to this question of, of what is your purpose in doing your family tree and what is going to, what is, what's going to kind of satisfy <laughs> the, the particular interests that you have. Any other questions? No, that's it. It's all okay. been very interesting. All right. So thank you for being the, the guinea it's pig, okay. Alex. <laughs> and... Uh, We'll we'll see you on the uh, on the next time that we uh, we run one of these. Thanks very much.